Coming to you from the heart of the Great White North. Welcome to the Canadian Prepper Podcast. Immerse yourself in the world of preparedness with insights from seasoned experts and a touch of Canadian practicality. Your go-to source for all things survival, resilience, and self-reliance. Now, let's kick off another episode packed with knowledge and strategies to ensure you're ready for whatever life may throw your way. Stay tuned and let the journey to preparedness begin. Welcome to episode number 245 of the Canadian Prepper Podcast. We are recording on August the 11th, 2024. My name is Eric, host of the show, based in Southern Ontario, hunter, target shooter, ham radio operator, and of course, computer geek. As a first responder, witnessed an over-reliance on emergency services during major events and started a small preparedness company to help people get better prepared for at least 72 hours. And I'm Jeff. I'm based in Central Ontario. I'm a target shooter, ham radio operator, general overall handyman, and weather nerd. Awesome. Uh, if you want to uh, support the show, you can buy some swag. We've got the Canadian Prepper Podcast t-shirt and the tactical Velcro patch available at prepperpodcast.ca. All the proceeds help cover the podcast cost. If I could talk. Oof. <laughs> yeah. And if you're enjoying the show, please take a few minutes and submit a review wherever you found us. We want your feedback good or bad. Uh, we also invite you to reach out, tell us about something you learned this week. Again, you can email us at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. All right. So we've got some, I don't know, expensive monetary. I don't know. I couldn't come up with a good joke for this one. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Whatever you want to call the content in this episode. Oh, we're going to start off with some news articles. We'll update you on our personal preps since the uh, last episode. Then we're going to get into the main topic and we're talking about the importance of cash. So it should be some fun. Mm-hmm. But, uh, we'll get into the news. We'll let Jeff run with it. Yeah, I got a couple of quick articles here. Um, so there's been quite an increase in seismic activity in and around um, Japan um, and around that fault line, little, even a, a bit up towards uh, Alaska's had several small earthquakes in the last bit. So uh, Japan issued their first ever mega quake warning uh, on Wednesday after they had a 7.1 earthquake. Um, their prime minister, or president, whatever you want to call him, canceled a, an out-of-country uh, trip he was supposed to take just to be there. They really kind of kind of thought something was going to happen, and I was kind of sitting around waiting for it to happen too, and... <laughs> So far, knock on wood, it's been four days. Uh, they're still getting small earthquakes, but nothing nothing big has happened yet. So um, we'll have to see what happens. That's the one thing with the earthquakes. You never know. It's not like you True. can see them coming or, you know, whatever. It just nope. happens when it happens. It's true. And the second article I have uh, for supply chain sort of issues is uh, we have a potential rail strike looming for Canada. Uh, Some of it may even uh, lap a bit into the U.S., uh, but the uh, CN and uh, CPKC, so that's Canadian Pacific and Kansas City, they joined in to make one one big um, rail infrastructure, I guess, or whatever you call it. Um, They've been in negotiations. Negotiations broke down. Uh, There was a review by the Industrial Relations Board, and they uh, wouldn't step in. So it looks like if there's no deal reached, which it sounds like there's not going to be one because both sides are far apart and they're shooting uh, pretty significant barbs at each other, that there will be a... uh, a Canadian rail strike uh, as soon as August 22nd. Um, whether they go on strike or the, the, the um, companies lock them out, either way, you know, the union says we're going to go on strike and the uh, railways say, yeah, no problem, go on strike, we're locking you out anyways. So, um, yeah, it it's it's going to be interesting. I I can't see it being considering the amount of stuff that gets sent by rail 
I can't see that the government will let it go on too long before they'll step in. Um, but then again, we're talking about the liberals, so who knows what they're going to do. So anyways, just uh, something to be prepared for in the next couple of weeks. Um, it does also say that um, it will also affect commuter operations in Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal because they rely on the CPKC dispatchers mm. who will also be going on strike. So, yeah, could be interesting. I feel as though there's a threat of a rail strike every couple of months. There's a threat of any kind of strike every couple yeah. of months anymore. It just, you know, I I, I get it that, yeah. you know, the economy's rough, but if you keep giving all yeah. these, you know, public sector people wages to catch up to what things are costing, the cost of those things go up and then they want another raise and it's just a vicious circle. Right. So this is true. Yeah. You know, I'm not laying, I'm not laying blame at either one of them. Just saying it's just a vicious circle that just keeps going around and around. So this is true. I just uh, take a second here to shout out to Denny. I see him in the, uh, the live chat there. He hasn't been around for the last couple of weeks. I believe you have some shift schedule changes. So it's good to see you back in the live chat. Absolutely. Yeah. He's, uh, he's been out for a while. So, yeah, good to see him back. Welcome, Denny. All right, let's move into what we've done lately for preps. Sweet nothing. Uh, <laughs> I've been I've been down at the trailer for, I think today's day eleven. So uh, just been doing some R and R. Literally, basically doing nothing for ten days. Kind of feels good actually, but uh, yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. Nope. Oh, it's uh be you know you gotta take that time sometimes right yeah probably be back home tomorrow or tuesday at the latest and i'm quite sure there's uh gonna be a long list of stuff to do but it is what yeah, it there is always is but that's important yeah. to do right and that's something that uh you know people should keep in mind that you can't uh you can't be doing the uh the preparedness thing 24 7 365 you'll just burn yourself out it's important to kind of take some time kick back relax and if you got all your stuff kind of squared away put your feet up Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I really didn't have much to do. So, yep. yeah, for me, uh, crazy, stupid, busy with work, been all over the place. Uh, and then on top of that, the kids, uh, being off on summer break has just uh, consumed a whole ton of my time. Uh, but have been able to carve out a little bit of time to, uh, to start practicing a little bit of Morse code here and there because, yes, still a radio nerd, that's not changing. And, um, the other day got out, uh, got out camping with a little guy. And once uh, once he got the bed, I was able to take my uh, my mobile radio setup, get it deployed, set up, and uh, make some contacts. And uh, it's always good to be able to get everything set up and uh, and working. And it was certainly working because I made contact with Slovenia, which was kind of cool. So just off of a little wire at the campsite, sitting beside the tent, running off a battery. So it's always good to get that practice in and make sure everything works the way you expect it's going to work. Excellent. Yep. But with that, maybe we'll move into the main topic. And uh, this evening, we, uh, we're going to talk about just the importance of cash. It's something that uh, people tend to talk about a lot in the preparedness community and, you know, kind of gets people riled up in certain instances. Depends on what it is you're talking about exactly. Um, we're not going to, you know, advocate for only cash all the time. You know, there's, you know, well, times are good. If you're using cards or whatever, that's, that's your own personal choice. Uh, but we wanted to talk about just why cash is important in emergency preparedness. Uh, maybe tell a couple of stories or, or go back and look at a couple of things that have happened in the past where cash got us through and just kind of why it's so prevalent in the uh, the preparedness community and why everybody is always so focused on, you know, you got to carry cash, you got to have money available to you. You got to, you know, stock it away, have it uh, close by, et cetera. So we figured it'd be a good one to kind of talk about, maybe demystify a few things. And uh, yeah, just chat it out. So here we are for episode uh, 245. So the probably the number one thing that uh, that comes to mind as soon as you get talking about um, carrying cash and, and needing it is if you get into that extended power outage scenario, right? End up uh, no power. It's been out for a couple of days. And all of a sudden now the shops, the stores, the gas stations, all those places that tend to have some kind of an emergency backup, whether it be battery backup or generator backup, can't now process your card, like your debit card, your credit card, 
your gift card, whatever kind of card it is you have. And you're three or four days into this emergency situation where you've got no power either, or maybe you do, maybe you've got a generator of some sort or your batteries are solar, but how are you going to buy things if you don't, uh, if you need them and there's no way to use those cards. And on top of that, if the banks have lost power, the ATMs aren't working. So now you can't get your funds. No, well, it's, um, it's something to kind of keep in mind for, uh, for this type of um, emergency preparedness thinking, right? Just having cash in your pocket, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever it is you think you need. It's kind of important, right? Yep, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I would imagine, I mean, I've, I've heard, I've heard stories on both sides where, you know, somebody's gone to a, there's been a power outage and they've gone to a grocery store and they've tried to buy something and they just weren't interested in selling to them. And they're like, I have cash. And uh, this just, the, the comment the person made to me blew my mind, but he said to, I, I'm assuming it was the store owner and, and said, you know, like, Hey, uh, I'll offer you like, you know, 50 cents on the dollar or whatever it was he was offering him for your stuff before it goes bad and you have to throw it out. And he just turned to him and said, why would I take 50 cents on the dollar from you when I'm going to, when I can throw it out and the insurance company will pay me hundred percent of my loss. And that just, I was just kind of like, he's going to throw food away and, and let your insurance Mm -hmm. company pay you for it instead of actually legitimately giving it out to people or letting people, buy it for maybe a bit of a reduced price but you're giving them food and apparently he he said the guy just wasn't interested huh it's an interesting take on it um i hadn't really considered the insurance claim side for the business instead of taking the cash holding on to it letting that item expire basically and now being able to claim it that's assuming the lights come back on (laughs) you know yeah the lights don't come back on now what Exactly. So, yeah, I, I I'm not saying that would happen. That would be the norm. I I doubt it would be. Right, yeah. You know that th- those those people would probably realize that everybody else is in the same boat, and they would, if you if you've got cash, you're king. So yeah. And we could go down the road. I know some people are going to be uh, jumping up, going, "Well, what about gold and silver and and all those other denominations?" Uh, not to downplay that as an option, uh, but we wanted to focus just on cash today um yeah sure if things really go south um gold silver etc are probably going to be usable to you as well um so i don't want uh, i don't want everyone thinking who's listening and jumping up and down going gold silver etc yeah it's an option as well but we're, we're focusing on cash, yeah, uh, for, cash for me it, for me at least in my, my opinion on it is that gold and silver and that that's a long long term option like exactly. we're talking we're talking we're getting into we're getting into months now Mm-hmm. Not just a few days, maybe a week, week and a half. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally agree. That's. Uh, I just wanted to to address that up front because I know there's going to be a couple jumping up and down, going, "You guys aren't talking about silver and gold, and that's yeah. important." And it is, but in this scenario, we're talking more short term, like Jeff said, yeah. and just getting getting you kind of through that power outage. I'm sorry, I got a little bit of a cold, if you couldn't tell from the voice, so I'll be muting the mic here and there as I try to cough my way through talking this stuff out. Um, yeah, and the, 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 the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll jump in is, is um, yeah, cash is good to have. I would, I would suggest um, smaller denominations, mm-hmm. fives, tens, maybe twenties, um, even change if you've got it. it if you're, especially if you're going out and you're, you're, you're buying something, you're going to that store and there's other people that see you, if you're whipping out fifties and hundreds, guess what? You're a target. You're you're giant you're, target now. And you're probably not going home with those fifties and hundreds. No. So, but if you're throwing out a five, Hey, I'll buy this for five bucks or this for 10 bucks. You're not, you're not giving off that, that perception that, Hey, I've got a lot more where that came from. And so. And that's a, that's kind of a great point. It, it kind of comes back to a couple of episodes we've done in the past where focusing on your environment and what's going on around you and what's happening and being cognizant of the fact that people are going to be watching and they're going to be paying attention to everybody else. 
So having that plan ahead of time of, okay, power's gone out, using that scenario still, right? Not a big deal, happens all the time. It's been out for a couple of days. Okay, that's a little bit more off-putting, right? In a few days now, not so normal for the most part. Okay, now I need some supplies. Local shops are still open. Planning out the denominations that you're going to bring with you and, and being prepared in the worst case scenario of getting out to a store and somebody going, oh, that guy's got, you know, a couple of fives, maybe a 10 or, or whatever, and being able to recognize the fact that either you're going to be able to go and get the items that you want to purchase. Maybe you lose them to somebody being stupid and coming by and, and trying to take your things and just realizing, you know what, I've got 20 bucks in my pocket. If that's going to satisfy the guy, he takes it and goes. Or if you if, if the scenario plays out enough and you can retaliate back, safely of course it, it, it all depends on, on what the scenario is you're looking at right but um planning out ahead of time what you're going to bring realizing the fact that you're either going to be able to get those items or maybe you're going to end up losing it depending on the scenario uh, but just having your mindset um, that we've touched on a few times of here's how things are going to go and here's how i want it to be uh, very very important and and also being like jeff said cognizant of the fact that you're not flashing all that cash around right know how you're going to take your wallet out of your pocket, know what you're going to be able to display and, and show and be prepared to have some of it stashed, maybe in one pocket, one in another pocket, one somewhere else. And just that way people that are watching you are not seeing everything that you're carrying. Yep. And, and on that too, um, as you, you said, Eric, perception and, and visual. So say for example, you know, we, we talked about flashing, but you go into the store and the guy, you, you buy, I'm not saying don't buy the store out, um, but be, be cognizant. Like we said, if you walk out of that store and you're carrying 10 shopping bags full of stuff, again, you're a target. Yeah. If you've got yep. one bag, maybe two depending on, as you say, the circumstances and everything. And as we keep saying, know your crowd, know your area, know if you need to take something that's going to protect you um, in this scenario. And we'll leave it at that, but just, um, you know. And this, this is of course kind of spelling out. We're getting a little bit further in down into the weeds of a, you know, a, a power outage kind of situation or a, a situation that's knocked out uh, resources in the area. Yeah. The first couple of days that we've seen it with some major power outages that have happened here before, for the most part, the community comes together. Everybody's friendly. Everybody helps each other out. Right. And yeah. don't fall into that trap of, okay, everything's fine. Everything's great. Everyone's helping each other out. That's great. Cause that's how humans normally react to things in the short term. Right. We're all trying to help each other out, but also just be cognizant of that underlying section of society that may not want to be helpful and may want to just take advantage of what you have. And they may very well be sitting out in the shadows watching and seeing what everybody else is doing. And they see you go into the store and buying things and getting things for yourself, your neighbors, et cetera, but they're watching, right? So just keep an eye on you, head on a swivel. Like I said, we think we've said that a million times before. Um, and just keep an eye and just be cognizant of the fact that, if you've got cash on you, people are going to notice. Yep. And yes, we've got uh, Douglas uh, Douglas in the live chat here. Uh, we've got a, a trained investigator. Yep, there's only two of us tonight. So the uh, well, the joys the of the summer. The two most important, the other, the intern and the rest <laughs> of them just, <laughs> this was too much for them. So Yes, it, it is me and Jeff this evening. Uh, the joys of summer months and trying the podcast on weekends. Um, sometimes uh, everybody's around and sometimes nobody's around. So yep. here we are. But that's okay. That's why we like to have a whole bunch of people on the panel so we can at least uh, get a few people on a Sunday night together to uh, to do an episode. So and so one, we, of the, one, of, one of the other things we could we could kind of talk about or chat about is where do you keep, where do you, where do you put your money away? Where do you keep it? Do you, um, do you always have cash on you? Um, I do. I always have cash on me. Um, and I have a couple of hiding spots for some other accessible cash, um, that I may need if situation presents itself and 
um, yeah, they, you know, do you, do you keep a bunch in your, your, your go bag? Yeah, that's a good point. Or, yeah. or, you know, do you hide some in a, in an inconspicuous spot in your vehicle or something, or, you know, where people may, may not really think to look, or, I mean, obviously what's the first thing they're going to open the glove box, you know, maybe your center, center console, console. Yep. but if you've got somewhere else inconspicuous that you could hide it, um, I would suggest doing that. But um, yeah, I, I, I always have cash on me. Yeah. And that's a great point too, is planning out where you're going to keep it, how, how much you're going to keep. We kind of touched on small denominations versus larger ones. Um, but having that cash and then deciding, is this cash that I'm going to keep on me that, you know, if, if I just happen to be at a store and I want to grab something and maybe I don't have, uh, if I regularly use a credit card or a debit card or whatever, I don't have those available to me. Am I going to use that cash then to purchase something? Or is that cash you set aside and you do not touch unless shits hit the fan? Right. So that's kind of a, a, a thing that you need to decide too. It's probably good to have a little bit of both, right? Have that cash that you set aside that you don't touch, period, unless something's gone completely wrong. And then a few bucks on you just in case that covers off those daily um, those daily necessities. Or even let's reverse it. You have all your cards on you. You get to the store and the internet's down and they can't process cards. So you got some cash on you. You can pay with cash carry on your day doesn't sound like a, an emergency preparedness thing, but it's just an everyday preparedness thing because maybe you just need that little bit of gas to get home or, you know, you need that coffee because the kids didn't sleep last night. So you were up all night and you you just need to pick me up, right? That, it's just that absolutely kind of defining what the me. cash is for. Yep, that absolutely happened to me many years ago, but um, I was basically like out in the middle of, of nowhere and there was one small town and I get there to get gas cause I need gas to get to the next town. And the big sign on their gas pump says cash only, um, debit down. I had cash. I was good. There were other people there that they're like, one guy was like, it, it wasn't obviously the store's fault. There's was, there's was, that the machine was down. But the guy was like, well, you have to do something because, you know, I have to get here and I have to and I need gas. And, you know, if your machine isn't working, you should just give me enough gas and you should let me go and I'll come back later and pay blah, blah, blah. And they're like, uh, no, that's not how the system nope. works. And I just went inside and gave them my money and they turned the machine on. They turned the gas pump on and yep. I pumped my gas and drove away. So. Yeah, and it's it, it's just one of those things that you may come across a, a gas station that just won't, uh, you know, be, no, by like you said, no fault of their own. Technology has just failed that day. Well, look at the Rogers outage, right, that we had a little while ago. Couldn't process any payments. If you had cash yeah. in your pocket, you're still good to go, right? So it, it doesn't sure. have to be the doom and gloom scenario, where, you know, the whole world's ending and, oh, my God, I need cash to get out of the apocalypse. It could be just, and it most likely will be, just everyday little annoyances that happen where the, the system's gone down and you still got some cash in your pocket so you can still, uh, or, like or this, Jeff said, or get this some whole, gas. Yeah, or, or something big happens like that, that crowd strike um, right. issue that we had. Apparently mm -hmm. there were, there were people that didn't get paid for days because the banks couldn't process their, the payroll or, or however it worked. And, mm -hmm. They were going, I think I read somewhere, somebody said they, their, their paycheck was four days late. Yep. So Is that too. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of reliance on technology, right? So having some cash on you, too much. way too much reliance on technology. And that's yeah. coming from a computer geek like myself. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> uh, we've got Dave in the live chat says multiple hiding spots, uh, keeps at least some of it safe from robbers and the wife. <laughs> So good point. Stash cash in all kinds of different spots, right? But don't forget where you stashed it. Yep. That's the trick. And when you're buying that new couch and throwing the old one away, remember what might be <laughs> hidden in that couch. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, take the money, take the bags out that are stamped with the money symbol before you throw the couch yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like there's there's all kinds of options that you've got. Uh, obviously, the store cash. Uh, you know, if you're going to store a significant amount, and this all kind of relates to your personal preferences, right? We're not going to tell you you have to have this certain amount. You need to carry this amount. You need to have you know x amount of fives and x amount of twenties and x amount of tens. Uh, it's totally up to you and your planning and what's going to fit kind of in your situation for what you're going to keep. Uh, but just as far as storing cash at home. You know, there, there's the option of just the, the old traditional safe. Right? You can store it in a safe at home. Probably the first thing any uh, nefarious individual is going to look for in your house is some kind of a safe because that just screams something important is in here. Um, you could look at that. Hidden compartments, probably the number one favorite of preppers. You know, finding somewhere to, to stash some cash that doesn't look like it would hold cash is, is a pretty good idea. Um and then like we've kind of touched on just diversifying where you're going to store it, right? Store some in the safe. Maybe use that, uh, accept that, that that's going to be kind of your throwaway. If somebody does break into the house, they're going to go for the safe first. They get the safe, well, they get away with whatever money is sitting in the safe and just be prepared to be okay with that if it happens. But then stash some somewhere else in your little hiding spot that doesn't look like it would hold cash. Kind of acts as, uh, you know, two birds, one stone. Guys that uh, came in and took your stuff are now happy because they think they got what they were looking for, but they missed the actual main stash of things. And uh, you still have uh, a cash available to you, right? I think we've talked about that quite a bit in the uh, the podcast of just having something that you're willing to lose, but actually having more of it somewhere else. So you're not actually out, but you've at least gotten rid of a threat or moved somebody along that um, maybe you just weren't able to fight off. Um, so I'm not going to say... Um, don't fight them off, but it's not probably the wisest choice. Yeah, what else do we have here? Um, we can move into bartering, right? If you are into that, uh, that, uh, holy shit situation where, uh, where things have really gone downhill, you might be the only one on the block that's got cash. Use it as a bartering option because, uh, people still recognize what it is, right? We've been using it for ever and ever. And depending on what it is you're looking for, um, you you may not you may not have something yourself that you can barter for what that person has. But if that person is willing to sell it to you for money, well, then you can buy it. Exactly. And uh, thanks for getting me through that coughing fit, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> this cold this cold sucks. My goodness, it's the middle of August. I shouldn't have a cold. Um, another thing to think of, and we've already kind of touched on the precious metals, but um, alternatives to cash, food, tools, you know, those are bartering options as well, books, any kind of equipment you have, you know, keep those in mind. Uh, just kind of touch on that, even though we're, we're talking about strictly cash today, but it's always a good reminder. But another thought, what denomination or what type of currency are you going to keep? Are you going to hold on to strictly local currency would you look at foreign currency would that maybe be something that's useful to you um you know uh, being in canada is it worthwhile maybe stashing away some american denomination of currency as well in case you maybe end up across the border depending on what kind of scenario you're dealing with that is completely a, a personal kind of decision you're going to know what your plan is you're going to know what your um what your your options are for either getting out of a situation that you're in or, or staying at home. So thinking about that, though, because I don't think that's something that a lot of people really focus on. People will kind of focus on keeping the local type of currency um, ready to go, but I don't think they really focus on having foreign currency uh, because getting that foreign currency in a situation where maybe the power is out or things have gone uh, awry other ways, getting that actual foreign currency, if you decide, hey, you know what, I'm hopping the border somewhere else, could be quite difficult if not impossible so figuring out what you want to keep and what types is kind of critical now because right now you can access it if things uh things go awry you might not be able to you might still be able to get your local currency depending but the foreign currency is going to be really really hard yeah yeah so and that's going to kind of 
be up for our guys that are guys and gals that are living closer to the they're like border towns and such but it could be folks too that are a little bit further into uh in the provinces it really depends on on what you think you're going to do in a in a situation yep. or even just like a, a mix of currencies right um that's probably probably the best way to do it i would think because uh, you're going to want some local currency because that's what people local to you recognize and will use. But again, maybe in a uh, in a bad situation, they'd be willing to accept uh, in Canada, American. Um, I don't know if Americans would be willing to accept Canadian because our money is colorful and I guess weird to them. But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, having some different denominations might not hurt. Uh, but again, that's kind of up to uh, your specific scenario as to whether or not it be foreign currency would be useful in your area or not, or useful at all in your preparedness. Uh, we kind of touched on protecting your cash. Um, but again, just being cognizant of your surroundings and not flashing the uh, the cash around is, uh, is obviously important. Um, and just safeguarding it, having... Having that mindset, knowing that, you know, you've got some cash on you and maybe people are watching you. It's just, you know, we, we harp on that a lot and we've harped on it a lot throughout all the different uh, episodes of the podcast, but it's important that just situa- situational awareness is key, right? Just especially in a scenario where people are starting to get a little bit itchy and things have been uh, not the norm for a little bit longer than two or three days. Situational awareness is huge, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, like yeah. we said, um, some, some real world scenarios of that, uh, that happening, like the Rogers outage is huge. So that's probably the most recent in, uh, in memory for Canadians anyways. Um, for our international listeners, Rogers is a major, uh, telecommunications corporation and, uh, they had a little bit of an oopsie, uh, during an update, uh, or so they say a software update to some major equipment, which brought down, uh, pretty much uh, all of Canada for quite a significant period of time <laughs> and uh, transactions were not able to be made. And by significant, I mean, it was about a day or so um, transactions weren't able to be made. You weren't paying by credit card or debit. Um, the whole system was down. Cell phones were down. Like everything was, internet was down. Um, it was a, uh, it's a big deal. And um, if you had cash, you were still good to, for the most part, operate. There were still some, some stores that just wouldn't operate at all. They just shut right down. Uh, but if uh, if places had things in uh, in place to be able to operate with cash only, you were able to still move about your day fairly normally. There's still some things that kind of got in your way, but for the most part, you'd be unaffected. Yep. So um, just on that sort of bit of a line. So sadly, in Canada, there are no laws that compel mm. a merchant to accept cash. Uh, merchants can just refuse cash. There was a uh, a new, I guess, kind of deli sort of food trucky kind of place. Like they did, they did subs and fries and that, that kind of stuff in Midland, and they put right on their door from day one, cash not accepted. Until the power went out, and then they were more than happy to take your cash, but. Um, yeah, they, they just, they just said we're, we're, we're not taking cash and, um, you know, that, that just blew my mind because I'll, I'll get into this a little bit, but I don't, I won't go too deep, but I'll try and keep it short. So kind of something that people don't understand is cash holds its true value. So here's an example. I buy something from Eric for 50 bucks. If I give him a $50 bill, he has a true $50 bill. If I pay him by an online transaction somehow, a visa, debt, whatever, the banks charge him a fee or they charge me a fee. Or, but anyways, he's not getting $50. He's maybe getting $48 or whatever. Correct. The transaction fee comes up. So now instead of Eric getting 50, he gets 48. So now when he goes to spend that $50 technically that I've given him somewhere else and he uses a card, now it's losing more value. And every time you use a card to make that payment, that $50 continues to lose value. And I believe they said after 
I think it was 26 or 27 transactions. Technically, that $50 is gone. It no longer exists. It's been sucked up by the fees by the big banks who are making record profits. If it's the $50 that I give to Eric and Eric gives it to somebody else and somebody else gives it to somebody else and they do that 27 times, guess what? The 27th person still has the full $50 in their hand. There's no depreciation. Nope. There's no taking money off the top. There's nothing. It holds its true value. And we can go down the uh, cybersecurity uh, rabbit hole here for a second as well. Um, every time you buy that thing with that credit card, there is a record of what you purchased, when you purchased it, where you purchased it, at exactly what time you purchased it. And that, of course, is all being aggregated and, and sold off to uh, data brokers. So right. do I have an episode for you? Exactly. So, yeah, <laughs> we, I had that we covered this in the cybersecurity that. episode. Yep. I had that in my quick notes that I, I missed. Yeah, was that technically cash can't be tracked by the government? Yes, they know when you take it out of your bank account or whatever, but that's all they know. That's, that's it. True. Hey, Jeff just took $250 out of the bank. I wonder what he bought. None of your business. And you're <laughs> never going to know because there's not going to be a receipt. So, um, yeah. Yep. So there's there's that little bit of anonymity to uh, to cash, right? Which I think is the the big draw to the preparedness uh, community as well is just simply being able to feel like you're not being tracked, although there's still ways that you could be tracked. Oh, yeah. But it, it's it, it's just what it's it's making it trickier because again, playing with cards and such there's that digital trail right away, right? It's, it's instantly, as soon as that transaction is done, it's linked to your name. What you bought is linked the time, date, location, merchant you bought it from yep. is all there. And then like Jeff said too, there's all the fees that fly around and you know what? It, it's convenience. So a lot of us use it because it's convenient. And I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of the argument, hole of the arguments of, uh, you know, cards are bad, cards are evil. You know what? If you use them, great. If you don't, great it's, it's your personal preference uh, as far as what you do and don't do uh, but having yep. a little bit of cash in your back pocket probably a wise choice especially if you're listening to this podcast and you're kind of even if you're just new to the preparedness world or you're getting into it or you've been into it for years and years and years having a little bit of cash in your back pocket it's not going to hurt anything and it might just get you through that uh that one little scenario the you know like we said you're wheeling home and all of a sudden the Internet's out and the gas station can't uh, can't process your transaction, but they can take your cash. That's great. And then like Jeff said, you're not lying in the pockets of the bankers then either. So it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And it blew me away when uh, <laughs> when I saw in your notes that there's no law that compel anybody to uh, accept cash or emergent to accept cash because that's kind of a, a thing you hear too. A lot of people are argue that, well, you have to take cash. It's required by law. I looked it up and you're hundred percent right. There's, there's nothing yep. that says you it's, have to. And, and, it's a wise and choice. Same, you don't have to. I was the same way. I thought, you know, places could not turn down legal currency. Till I started doing a bit of homework. And then yep. that's where I discovered there's, there's a move, not in Canada. There's a move in the States. There's a couple of States that have already, passed legislation that says merchants that where cash is presented the merchant must accept it so mm. you can't just say no i'm not going to take your money um i think they're oh, i'm trying to think what it was i think missouri was one of them and then there's a there's a handful of states that have pending laws to come out to mm -hmm. compel the merchants to to take to take cash because everybody is, and I think rightfully so starting to wake up a little bit more. Again, we don't like to get too political here and whatever, but they're, they're starting to wake up to the reality of how bad a cashless society can really be. And we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. That's all I'm going to say on it. But yeah. I, I just think some, some places are starting to wake up a little bit to that. So, yeah. It, it blows my mind, uh, even the, the story you're telling, Jeff, where a, a business doesn't want to accept cash because being someone that runs a business, taking credit cards, 
is debit cards as well, but debit cards don't cost nearly as much, but credit cards, at least 2.6 to 3% on any transaction, plus another little fee of like 75 cents or a dollar. It, it cuts in the profits huge because like Jeff talked about those, you know, that percentage comes off the top. The merchant only gets what's left over. Um, yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't want to take cash because you get the full 50 bucks. You don't get 48 of the 50, right? But yep. eh, it is what it is. But yeah, it was interesting because uh, I, I think a lot of um, a lot of people just in general, they don't necessarily have to be in the preparedness uh, community, but just people in general kind of think that merchants have to accept cash. And I think that's a little bit of a, a an urban legend, at least Canada wise. We can't speak to other countries, but in Canada, it doesn't appear to be a law that they can't not. But I think it's silly that they wouldn't given the rates that are charged to process those cards. It's insane. Well, that, that's, but you have that's to do it because exactly it's convenient. What, that's exactly like when I was looking at it, I was thinking like, what, as you said, Eric, you know, being a businessman, like you are, why wouldn't you take cash? Why wouldn't you take that full 50 bucks instead of selling something that's worth 50 bucks and accepting 47 for it? Technically, you know, you're, you're, you're getting less for it. I like Joey's comment in the live chat. I'm going to get pesos. So it looks like I'm wealthy. <laughs> it's good. I like it. Yeah, a little bit good. of humor in the yeah. live chat tonight. It's good. It's good. Yep. Then uh, Dave, in the live chat's got a good point as well. Uh, keep currency that can, that coincides with every passport. So yeah, if you've got different, uh, uh, different passports. Um, so you've got um, residency in, uh, in different countries and your passport uh, allows you in the different countries fairly easily. Yeah, then keep the currency that coincides with the uh, the different passports that you have. That makes total sense. Again, that's why I said it kind of boils down to your your personal setup and and what is going to work for you because we can't uh, we certainly don't have all the answers. So it's um, well, that's a good point. Yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, that the main point we're trying to make is keep cash on you. Always have cash on you and you know, don't, don't be afraid to use it. Um, yeah. and, and like we say, have, have some aside for that, for that circumstance or that situation where your, your debit or your visa or whatever, isn't going to work. Then, you know, you're, you're, you're not stuck in that small little town because you can't get gas because their debit machine doesn't work or whatever. Hey, here's 50 bucks. I'd like $50 worth of gas, please. And they'll put $50 in them for you and away you go. Yeah, I think to kind of roll it all up, the idea is to maybe have some cash that's going to get you through in like a little blip where internet's down, the store can't process, the grocery store can't process things because their their debit machines are down or whatever. To get you through that little, uh, that little hiccup. And then maybe have a stash as well that's set aside for a bigger problem where you know all of a sudden it's you know we're getting into weeks or months of services being down and things not being available um, that way you've got that little bit set aside it gets you the little blip you got your bigger amount set aside to get you through the bigger issues deciding where you're going to store it how are you going to store it how are you going to carry it it's kind of a personal thing uh, you're going to have to come up with on your own and that kind of also balances on your uh just your risk assessment and what you're, um, you know, what you're willing to kind of do. Um, but periodically even just reviewing and adjusting the amount of cash you have is probably important, right? So I'm paying attention to the news and what's going on and what's happening, what could potentially happen in your area. And then reassessing, do I need this much cash on a daily basis on my person? Should I shuffle it into some of my storage or squirrel away spots? And then reassessing every whatever is comfortable for you every year, every month, every three months. Do I need to carry that hundred bucks in my pocket now? Or can I cut it in half, scroll 50 bucks away into my hiding spot, keep 50 on me? Okay, I'm watching the news. A lot of things are happening. Maybe I'll take a little bit more out of my squirrel away spot and I'll carry 200 bucks on me for the next month or two, just in case, you know. Figuring that out is going to be important, and that's completely a personal thing that um, we really can't give you advice on. But maybe we can plant the seed in your in your head to think about it and plan it out yourself because it's it's going to be important. 
it's going to be uh, something you got to consider. And and it also, do you travel a lot? Are you gone for extended periods of time or are you close to home, right? If you're close to home all the time, you get home real easily. Maybe you stash more in a secure spot at home. If not, secure, secure spot in your car or on your person. And then just reassessing that and getting into the habit of looking it over. And I don't know, maybe looking over your go bag and your evac plans and your bug out plans and your stay home plans at the same time and tying it all together. Weird organization. And, and of course there's a comment from Joey in the live chat. I'm pretty sure Greg put him up to this comment, but, uh, you know that once a year he makes a hefty cash deposit at the uh, Pew Pew store. So, <laughs> great. Clearly thank you very American. much. You're banned. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and those that don't know, um, we usually do a pre show before we go live uh, where the panelists can all chat with each other in the same format that you see live here. And we tend to ban Greg about three or four times um, throughout that, uh, that pre show. Just because of the things that yeah, he, likes to, he likes to he likes to toss around his second amendment rights quite liberally too quite yes very freely yes so we make sure to ban him mainly out of jealousy not gonna lie yeah oh fully out of jealousy <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah that's kind of kind of the roundup of uh of cash we wanted to kind of demystify a few things give you a couple of things to think about uh, and just put it in your head because especially if you're you're new to the preparedness world and you rely on cards right now just getting used to the fact that maybe carrying a little bit of cash might be good for you the season preppers for the most part most already do uh, but it might be a good reminder for you as well maybe you've fallen into that uh, comfort zone of well, i'll just use my card for everything and, and uh, over time you just get used to it and you stop carrying cash so carrying cash around it's a big uh big topic in the preparedness world something to just keep in the back of your mind and have a little bit of a plan. Take uh, take some of the uh, the tips out of today's uh, show and implement them yourself, and hopefully it helps you out a little bit. Gee, that uh, sounds like that was the podcast class. challenge. It might be. We might get into the podcast challenge in a second here. Any last second thoughts there, Jeff? No, I think we've I think we've kind of covered everything um, that I sort of had on my list. So, cool. Awesome. Yeah. So podcast challenge. I don't think we've done podcast challenge in a little bit, but then again, I haven't been on in a little bit either, but uh, yeah, the podcast challenge is just review what you're carrying now. And if you're not carrying anything, put a couple bucks away, toss a few bucks in your wallet, toss a couple bucks in the car in a, in a big, inconspicuous spot in the house. Just start thinking about, you know, what could I possibly need some cash for in my day-to-day life? If you're the type of person that relies on your cards for the most part, if you're not, you're already squirreling cash away and well, we're not going to help you. But uh, <laughs> for those of you that are maybe relying a little bit too heavily on cards and such right now and the conveniences that life has provided us, start planning out uh, putting some cash away and what denominations and what uh, what type of uh, currency, whether it's Canadian, American, the pesos like Joey's going to do. So mm-hmm. Figure that out and figure out what you want to squirrel away. Uh, upcoming events. So the annual Preppers Meet 2025. We already have the dates. <laughs> uh, July 10th to the 13th. So that's fantastic. Because in the years past, we've had to kind of wait a little bit for the dates. So it's good to see the dates already up there. But uh, location yep. to be announced. But as Terry says, there's a 99.5% chance that we'll be back at the same spot, the uh, Slovenian hunt camp there, just north of Alliston. Great, great location, great area. What a fantastic, so, um, fantastic location. Yeah. Uh, I really, I really hope it's, uh, it's there to stay for, uh, for years to come. Cause that's a, uh, that's an awesome, awesome location. And there's some talk about us doing a live show there next year. So that would be a lot of fun. Yep. Right, do you got a weather blurb? Right, well, I'll slip into it. I do. So, um, <laughs> it's funny. So for the most part, aside from some yeah, some flooding, uh, the odd tree down, uh, stuff like that, we more or less seem to escape fairly well from Hurricane Debbie. Um, the funny part is 
a lot of people weren't even paying attention to it. The, there were people out there, and you know, I, I made a comment. We got rain here the one day, and I said, well, that's going to be a bit of the remnants of Debbie. And they're like, who? What? They they had no clue. So, you know, again, it is what it is. Uh, but having said that, um, don't pull your stuff out of storage yet. Um, there is another storm in the Caribbean. It's already been numbered by uh, the National Hurricane uh, Center, which means it will probably get a name within the next several days. Uh, and that will be Ernesto. Ernesto is the next name up. Um, uh, the increase, um, if there's any good thing about it, um, there will be some impacts like down in the, uh, in the Caribbean, like in the, uh, the lesser Antilles possibly, um, I don't think it's going to make it as far as, uh, as Cuba, but it'll get into the, like Espanola and those, those kind of places, maybe the Turks, Turks and Caicos possibly, um, but a lot of the models are are making it take a, a pretty drastic right turn before Florida and stay out in the Atlantic. So it's just going to be kind of what what we term in, in the um, the weather world as a fish storm. Uh, now, having said that, Bermuda uh, looks to be in line. Uh, if it if the path is as it says, they could get not maybe a direct hit, but at least a glancing blow. So, um, you know, be aware of that again, though, we're, we're talking, we're talking five, seven, 10 days out for this. So things can and probably will change, but a lot of the models are starting to come into agreement that, um, it appears that this is going to miss at least the Southern part of the United States, like, like Florida, the Carolinas, that there is one rogue model that says, it's it's kind of going to go up in the Atlantic and then it's going to make a left and it's going to make landfall somewhere around New York City or somewhere in there. I mean, if that happens, obviously for them, that's a worst case scenario, but that's just an outlier at this point. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be running for the hills if you're in that area. But again, pay attention. Um, but outside of that, um, I'll. Uh, keep putting my posts up on uh, the discord under the hurricane section. So uh, if you don't, if you're not on our discord, uh, get yourself over there. Um, in terms of the rest of um, the weather, Canada, the United States, uh, we're going to see a lull in some severe storm activity for the next several days. Actually, you can thank Debbie for that. It's, it's a, a long explanation as to how weather and all that stuff works, but basically the power of the storm moved the uh, the low the ridge further south and east. And if you haven't noticed in the last day or so, uh, it's quite significantly cooler than it's been for most of the summer. Um, and that's that's going to hang in there for probably the next several days, if not a week, and then we'll start to see a gradual warm up. But again, all things depend on where the next, uh, the next hurricane goes. Awesome. Well, with that, um, I'll bring episode number 245 of the Canadian Prepper podcast to an end. Uh, you can find the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, of course, your favorite podcast app. I'm pretty sure we're on all of them by now. Uh, please do submit a, a review wherever you do listen, though, because it does uh, help other people find us. And, of course, encourages the algorithms. And we do record these shows live on YouTube, uh, Facebook, if that's your only option. If you want an early peek at the shows, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Canadian Prepper Podcast, and click the notifications tab. Uh, that gives you an alert when we're going live. Anybody wants to reach out to me, you can uh, send an email to feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. They may or may not forward it along to Jeff. We'll see. <laughs> well, I haven't seen one yet, so I think the answer is you won't, but that's okay. Or just nobody's Either that or I'm not very popular. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can check out uh, Rapid Survival at rapidsurvival.com. You can get me there on the live chat. You can also email me at feedback at prepperpodcast.ca. Thanks for joining us. Uh, until next time, be prepared, stay safe. 
and keep learning. As we wrap up another insightful episode of the Canadian Prepper podcast, we want to extend our gratitude to our listeners for joining us on this journey of preparedness. Remember, the key to survival is knowledge and readiness. If you want to support the show and engage with our community further, consider signing up for our Patreon and joining our thriving community on Discord. Links are in the description. If you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave us a review. This is the Canadian Prepper Podcast, signing off. Until next time, be prepared, stay safe, and keep learning.